Hello friends and welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today the air is a slightly drier so Jenny is going to be ambitious and we are going to work in the front yard trimming up, tidying up everything. I cannot wait. It has been driving me crazy. What we're going to do is we are going to cut back the daylilies. Yes, we have that gorgeous daylily hedge that runs the whole length of our front yard. Beautiful, gorgeous yellow flowers. They always bloom about mid to late June. Stunning. This time of year, not so much. They look like poo, let's just be honest. So you can completely cut back your daylily foliage and I still got plenty of growing time left, so they will actually kind of re-sprout and give me some gorgeous green growth. No more flowers, just a nice little, pretty little green mound. So we're going to do that. Andrew and Jackson, I think, are going to come help me because it's, it's going to be a little bit of a job. And I'm just going to go ahead and push forward. We're also going to trim the boxwoods that are in front of the house. So let me show you. Let's do the boxwoods first. So, of course, the front of the house, right? And we have these massive boxwoods. They have been here for oh my gosh i don't even know if jackson was born so they're you know 14 15 years old we think they're winter gems it like i said it's been a hot minute since we uh bought these and planted these but i'm pretty sure they are winter gems so what we're going to do is shape them up i am not doing a hard prune i just want to tidy them up because if you know us here at gardening with creekside Jerry and I sit on our front porch every single morning and have our coffee uh, in the fall. Once it cools off, we'll sit here in the afternoon. But um, so we see this all the time. And if you look at the boxwoods, they're just a, they're just getting a little wooly, y'all. And so I just want to shape them up. So we're just literally going to come in here and give them a nice little shape. Typically, if I do a hard prune on my boxwoods, it is going to be coming out of winter and going into spring. I just want to tidy them up now. The key for timing that with trimming your boxwoods, of course, I am North Carolina. I am a zone 8A. I still have a lot of growing time uh, before we get our first like hard freeze. Typically, that's not going to be until like mid-November, sometime in November. So I've got the rest of August, September, and October. So I basically have like almost two and a half months. You want to trim your boxwoods in that summertime um, that you have enough time because it's probably going to reflush some new growth, right? You want that new growth to harden off before your first freeze. One year I made the mistake and pruned them too late. They flushed out with new growth and then we got that freeze and the entire tips were brown. So imagine that all winter long I had this boxwood, right? And all the tips were brown because they got burnt. So you want to make sure that you have plenty of time in your growing season before your first freeze hits that that new growth can harden off. That's going to look different on the calendar depending on where you live. Here in North Carolina, I should be just fine unless we have some crazy early, you know, freeze. But I should I have plenty of time and I will be fine. If you're in northern Michigan, then you're probably too late, right? So you should have done it earlier. If you're in South Georgia, you've got more time than I do, right? So you've got to be a student of your own garden. Know when typically your first freeze comes. And then I would say back up at least two months you know, two and a half months and that you can go ahead and trim them. So we're going to do that. And then the daylilies, right? So here we have um, this whole hedge of yellow daylilies all the way down. These are not anything like special, fancy, you know, they are just some good old traditional yellow daylilies. If you remember the story, when we moved into our house, we built our house uh, 20 years ago and so we y'all nothing is flat right everything is on a slope and of course we get tons of water so my mama Mimi right she was the one y'all can watch Brenna play um, she was the one that came up with the idea for us to put this hedge of daylilies in because of wash we were trying to keep our yard from washing away and she had all of these yellow daylilies at her house so what we did is we went and got her daylilies that she wanted to give us and we divided them into teeny tiny little clumps and then we planted them. The idea was that we were going to do a double row 
all the way down um, but we ran out of day lilies and then of course that lie you tell yourself oh I'll come back and you know we'll finish the double row well yeah that never happened and honestly it does not matter so you can see here is that we can you can kind of start to see the the double row and so this truly was to keep the yard from washing these day lilies are not what you call like the ditch day lilies they're not those yellow i mean the orange ones that spread like crazy the only thing that happens is is that your clump gets bigger every year but you can see right you've got the old these were the bloom stalks they can come out really easily but I just want to tidy this up. We look at this all the time. I want it neat and tidy. This is what's going to happen right here. So this is the path. There you go. Thank you, Brenna. This is the path that Brenna runs through. So there's, there's at least three daylilies here that she has completely destroyed throughout this summer, jumping through and running through the daylilies. This is what's going to happen. We're going to cut them back, clean all the foliage up, and then they'll reflush this nice little mound right here, and that's going to be great. Then, if we want, I don't think we're going to have time to do it today, but we can come back in and add some mulch here on the edge. I would also love to be able to come through and go ahead and annihilate the rest of my day, uh, crepe myrtle sprigs that have come up. I got my little paint brushes. They came in the mail yesterday, so we can come through and clean those up. So yeah, it's just a whole little uh, smorgasbord of tidying up, cleaning up, and just getting things neat and tidy because we have been incredibly blessed with loads and loads of delicious, yummy rain. And so everything is so green and so lush. It does not normally look this green in August, especially that front field, because that is not on any kind of irrigation. Um, but here we are, middle of August, and everything is great. We got seven inches of rain from Tropical Storm Debbie. Yesterday, we had more rain. So I just looked at the rain gauge. We had like two inches of rain from yesterday. I'm thinking that Chandler is gonna be coming. Chandler is the fellow that um, keeps our lawns and, and maintains our grass and just keeps it looking gorgeous and beautiful and healthy. Um, he might be coming today to cut the grass. So that's another reason I wanna go ahead and clean all this mess up because I know I'm gonna be making a mess. So when he comes through and cuts the grass and, and does the weed eating and the edging and the blowing, it'll look really good. So the plan is hopefully he'll come today and then Jerry can throw the drone up and um, um, we can kind of give you a, a tour, a bird's eye tour of this area. But daylilies, getting whacked back, taking care of those crepe myrtles, getting those killed, cleaning up the boxwoods, and uh, it's a little drier, so Jenny's a little bit more energized. Brenna's very happy to be outside. Like I said yesterday, it rained. We were in meetings all day. The poor dog was cooped up in the house. She thought she was losing her mind, and uh, so she is very excited to be outside. So Andrew's gonna be coming and joining me here in a little bit, and we're going to get the daylilies trimmed back. Of course, we're gonna use, on the daylilies, we're gonna use, I think it's an echo, it's a, um, it's a trimmer. It's a different than like, you'll see it in a minute. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get, while I'm waiting on Andrew, go ahead and get my electric trimmers and start working on the boxwoods. So we're moving with purpose. I'm very excited about this project today. It's going to look so nice when it's done.
My friends, Andrew and I are making quick work of this. So we decided to kind of divide and conquer. He is working on the daylilies. Bless his heart, you know, he's young. He's a young 20 something year old. He can handle the bigger job. It'll be fine. I, on the other hand, uh, you know, more experienced, mature person needs to do the boxwoods here in the shade. <laughs> So basically, uh, he is just kind of coming through and just finishing up and cleaning up what he was doing. The boxwoods are done. Now, y'all, I understand fully that <laughs> these are, this is probably not the absolute, like, perfect way to trim a boxwood, but these boxwoods are old. Like, I, I know it was before Jackson was born. I wasn't even pregnant with Jackson. So that was, they're at least, like, 16 years old. They have been here for a hot minute. Their, their time here at Creekside is very short because as far as limited, they're getting to the end of their life cycle. So the reason that I say that is because um, on, while on the outside where they get the full sun, they're, they're looking pretty good, right? But these, especially on, on this side of the porch, like they're, they're getting dead spots here in the back and inside so there's it's very kind of thin inside let me come around here to the back um and let me show you so we've got some dead spots right through here um right down in here there are some so um they are they are on the end of their life cycle and all i'm trying to do is make things look neat and tidy around here. This is a great time to do it as far as the year. Historically, I have not done this this time of year uh, for the very practical reason of that we have had for the past couple of summers, yellow jackets uh, create their nest underneath the boxwoods. And if you know anything about yellow jackets, they are mean, evil, very, very ugly uh, little wasps. So there's a type of wasp that sting and they are aggressive. They don't just, you know, sting you if you come, if you like hit the nest. They like will chase you and they are just evil. So that's why I've not done them, cut these boxwoods for the past couple of years is because we've always had some sort of yellow jackets nest within them. But I am very happy with how they turned out. I know they're sometimes a little, you know, they're a little severe. Like look at this one, see? We've got like this hole right here that's a dead spot but when you look at the big picture right the big picture is is that they're neat and tidy and they look so much better so Andrew like I said is finishing up and cleaning up his daylilies and going around that echo trimmer so if you can see it he has it turned almost at like a 90 degree angle um, and you can adjust that arm so we can go out straight or you can turn it to whatever angle you want but again, see, look, just cleaning them up. It looks so much better. They're nice little mounds instead of all this floppiness everywhere. And then you can see that he has started to rake it out. He'll come back and rake this out. And if we want to put some mulch in there, um, we can easily do that as well. But things are coming along quite nicely. You can really see the crepe myrtles where, where Andrew is right there. And they are just... Yeah, we'll get, we'll get those in a little bit, but everything is looking neat and tidy. So now what I'm going to do is I've got to clean up my mess from the boxwoods. So I'll get my rake, my hand rake, and my little pop-up containers. We're going to get all this cleaned up, get the blower out, blow it. Um, like I said, hopefully Chandler will come today, if not today, tomorrow, cut the grass, and it'll make it look really nice.
All right, my friends, so today's project is complete. Uh, we finished up right around lunchtime, so yay for us. Could not have done this without Andrew. He just did a fantastic job. Divide and conquer, right? He does daylilies, I do boxwoods. Y'all, it just makes all the difference in the world. It just feels more open and light and airy and fantastic. So um, yeah, all the, all the daylilies, nice and trimmed. He got them cleaned up as best we can with a thousand gazillion daylily uh, little leaves, uh, stems off of them. But yeah, they look great. You can really see um, the spacing on those and then like the double border, right? So that double line goes all the way to the well and then that's where we ran out and did a single, which worked out just perfectly. So now uh, when, when the grass gets cut, be able to maintain that a lot easier. And then maybe we come back in here with some mulch, I don't know, we'll just play that one by ear. Got my bird feeders hung up, uh, filled rather. Megan made a run for me at to the uh, Wild Birds Unlimited. I'm telling you what, y'all, this is the best food ever, but if you go and you start using their bird seed, I'm just telling you, if you start using their bird food, be prepared because you can't stop because you're gonna spoil your, your birds. My birds will eat nothing else now except for the Wild Birds Unlimited. So anyway, just a little FYI on that one. but. Got them filled, got the bird bath cleaned, and notice all the crepe myrtle suckers have been eliminated and taken care of. You can see my little pop-up container is full of all the debris. So I love using that Fertilome, that brush killer, stump killer, because it's so easy. Uh, Y'all, I ordered a value pack of like kids paint brushes off of Amazon. So I got like 50 of them for, I don't know, like $5. But it's perfect because like for instance, with this golden penny mac, I had crepe myrtles growing up all in it. Literally there was one in the center and then there was clumps all around. Well, I don't wanna go and spray something because I could risk getting that onto the foliage of the hydrangea. But with the paintbrush, I could just go in there, cut, and then paint, 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 and then there you go. So there was like one, and there was two, like there was probably like five or six around the edges, and then one coming up through the middle. So they are all taken care of. It is much more light and open and airy. I can get out of here. So that way I, I hear the little birds twittering. They're ready to eat. Oh, in fact, there went a little yellow finch. Maybe the camera will pick up on it. So there's a yellow finch on that feeder over there. They're a little hungry. Oh, here comes another one. There we go. I just love the songbirds, y'all. I'm such a bird junkie. I'm such a birder. And then, of course, the boxwoods. Seeing even from a distance how neat and tidy they look. I've got all my little, my little babes up there in a nice little row. Uh, tomorrow, Emily moves back to Anderson to start, start her second year at Anderson University. So she said that she wanted to go get some ice cream from our local favorite place, Tony's. So we're, uh, they're all patiently waiting on me to finish this video so that we can go to Tony's and get lunch, banana splits, milkshakes, the whole nine yards. So if you're, if you come to visit us here at Creekside, you've got to stop at Tony's. Tony's ice cream in Gastonia. I think Southern Living rated them as like one of the best ice cream joints in the south. It's fantastic. They make their own ice cream. Uh, so anyway, so they're waiting on me. But look at those boxwoods. Nice and neat and tidy. Yes, they're little meatballs. Well, big meatballs. That's all right. They're nice and I really, really love them. Now, I know that it looks like the begonias here, uh, they are perfectly spaced the same, right? Because I went off my bricks when I was placing the planters. Um, but this boxwood I think is, is planted a little further away as opposed to this one. So these are getting all up in each other, but that's all right. It's all right, it's August. So everything looks good, neat, tidy. And uh, it was a great morning's work. I can now sit on the porch and look out and be very happy. And my mind is at rest because um, it doesn't look cluttered. So there you go. It's been a great day. Get out there and do something. Pull a weed. If you pull a weed, you're still being productive. Um, Y'all enjoy it. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, my friends.